learn some positive classroom routines and expectations. Get ready. My name is Kyrie Denby. I'm the music teacher at Jacob Elementary School. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And we are the best because we act like the best. <laughs> anyway, today I'm going to try to in show you how to include some music into your regular classroom routines and it will help boost your learning just like that. Just imagine, you know, music makes everything better. Imagine what Star Wars would have been like without the music. Who would even want to watch it? Uh -uh, not me. Anyway, then think about music enhances almost every ritual and routine that we do in life. Your weddings, your funerals, your graduations, your award ceremonies, they always include music. Every movie that we watch, the soundtrack makes it better. So we're going to show you how to include some music into your lessons to bring life to your lessons. All right, get ready. <laughs> this will work even on NTI or in the classroom. Now, in the classroom, I normally have a bean bag. And whenever we and whenever the kids have a discussion and I want them to share, we call it the hot share NATO. And that's just a game of hot potato where you play music and they pass the bean bag. And when the music stops, whoever has the bean bag, they have to share. If we have a discussion or even like if we if I'm, I'm reviewing something, reviewing an activity or something before a test. I give them the bean bag and we pass it. And then whatever the question is, whoever has the bean bag when the music stops, they have to answer the question. But during NTI, you can do the same thing. Like you can grab a piece of paper, tell the kids to ball it up. And they have to turn on their cameras. That's what I tell them. Turn on your cameras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then... You turn on your music. And now normally during NTI to put music into a lot of my lessons, a lot of times I will use an external speaker because it kind of makes the sound better for the listener rather than just using your regular internal speaker. So sometimes I will use the external speaker. And so I play music and they toss the paper in the air. And then when the music stops, Whoever the last one is to catch their paper, that's who has to share. So I call it a hot share NATO. Yeah, I hope y'all use it. I want to see everybody using it. Hot share NATO. This is another activity that you can do that will incorporate a lot of people in your class. Now, I just want to say, this is for those teachers who get annoyed with desk drummers. Who make that noise and you're like, stop making that noise. Put that noise to use. Let them be the rhythm master. Now, the thing about that, I know you might want to start saying, well, I'll pick other people to be the rhythm master, but you don't want to do that because if that child is good at keeping the rhythm and that's his source of pride or her source of pride, let them be the rhythm master. And if you want to include others in being the rhythm master, let them pick who will help them or who they can train. They might can train somebody to be the rhythm master when they're not there. That's like being a teacher. We wouldn't say, well, we're gonna let everybody take a chance at being a teacher so it'll be fair. So let's not do that with the rhythm master. Pick those people who are good at rhythm and let them be the rhythm master. Then they can train and teach others to join them. So then maybe you can have two or three rhythm masters. Anyway. Let me get off of that <laughs> before I use up all my time. Okay, so 
This activity is very simple. You pick some readers. It can be more than five. It can be as many readers as you want. You can pick each one to read a paragraph or anything like that. You get your rhythm master. Then you tell your rhythm master, keep a beat. Now, they have to keep the beat the whole time. So that might be a little bit hard for them, but they can do it. If they're going to be the rhythm master, they have to learn to stay with it. So then one of the readers start reading. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff, wasn't scared of nothing neither. Hey, didn't come in this world to be no slave and wasn't going to stay one either. Farewell, she said to her friends one night. She was mighty sad to leave them, but she kept on going that dark hot night looking for her freedom. Hey, I won't read the rest, <laughs> but that's what you do. And you just keep going around the room or even you can do it virtual. I did a um, training, a PD on this a few weeks ago, and we did it virtually where I was keeping the beat. I was the rhythm master and others were reading. So you can do it virtually as well as in the classroom. Now, I hope you enjoy that one. Another thing that has been so instrumental in my classroom and even on NTI is the cloud relaxation. And this is what I do with my kids. I give them 20 seconds to get somewhere and sit down or lay down. Anytime my children see clouds in my room, they automatically know we, number one, get quiet. Number two, we sit still, no movement. And number three, we breathe in and breathe out. And we close our eyes and calmly go to a place of calm. And so the kids are so used to it that it's a part of, it's just something, it's a, a routine that you can start where the kids, are. they will be asking for, Mr. Timmy, can we do the clouds? Mm -hmm, let's do it. Y'all 20 seconds to sit down and do what you need to do. And I'll give you a quick example of how the kids do it. All right. And it also works on NTI because even though they're at home, when they see clouds on their screen, they automatically know this is our time to calm. And I normally use it as we're transitioning to another section of the class or as we're getting ready to close out class. This is how I do it with my kids. You can see right now, they have just finished dancing and I give them the 20 minutes. I tell them you can do whatever you wanna do in the 20 minutes, just as long as by the time the clouds hit, it's quiet and still. Watch them. You know what I thought would be fun? Let's try that now. Let's all try the cloud relaxation now and prepare for the last tip. So we'll do that now. Get somewhere, sit still, close your eyes. You got 20 seconds. Go ahead. Here we go. Okay, during this time, you would just try to sit back, close your eyes, and prepare. Breathe in, breathe out. Or as I tell the kids, smell the cookies. Blow 
out the candles. Smell the fried chicken. Blow up the balloon. This last activity, I normally do it with my kids as a listening tool when they're listening to music and I try to let them introduce them to new styles of music and I do how does it feel or how does it make you feel. And so what we do, we get, I give them four cards or if we're at, if we're at home on NTI, they just rip up four, rip a piece of paper into four sections or cut it, whichever one. <laughs> because at NTI we have to use what during NTI they have to use what they have at home and so we do four different emojis but the normal um, feelings that I use I might use different words but it's always happy scared mad or sad so I might use different words just to teach them different feelings or different ways to do it. But we use four different emojis. And I was thinking, instead of letting them listening to listen to music, as you are reading, like you can read a story or something like that, or you can still listen to music and just tell them as they listen, hold up a card. How does it make you feel? So that way they are still engaged like in the reading or if they're if you're watching a video as they're listening to the video they can just hold up a card so in that they would have to keep their screens on if i'm if if i'm not liking it or if i'm if the video like if we're talking about brianna taylor or what's going on now with coronavirus and they're holding up the card that says scared, then you're like, okay, that's something we need to talk about. So, you know, I haven't tried, I've tried it only with this small group of students that I uh, work with after school, but I haven't tried it with a large group or a whole class. So it would be good to see how um, it would turn out. So I would love to see some other teachers try. So just draw four emoji cards. And as you're reading a story or as you're talking about current events, just have the students hold up a feeling, however it makes them feel. You don't have, you know, just during the story, because each part of the story or each part of the report will make children feel a certain way at a different time. So don't, you know, they can just hold it up during the story. So just try that. And you tell me how it worked. It worked great with my small group that I tried it with. But I like to see some classroom teachers use it. Um, music teachers or art teachers, if you're using it, when you're showing a piece of art or a piece of music, the kids can just hold it up as they listen. So that way they don't have to interrupt and say, oh, oh, this makes me feel that scary. Oh, that's... That's a routine that you can start where no matter what they're feeling, even in the class, if you're teaching and they're starting to feel happy about something you're teaching, just hold up your emoji card. So that's another way of engaging your class. You know, that really doesn't pertain to music. It's an activity that I do with music, um, but you can use it in any way you would like. So tell me how it works. 
All right.